Bits, my people. Welcome back to another Liquid Alert. Huge news just coming in. Gary Lineker is set to return to his role as Match of the Day presenter for the BBC after his recent suspension. Now, if you don't know what's been going on with Gary Lineker over the past week or so, where have you been? He made a tweet a week or so ago calling out the government for a new illegal migrant bill that they will be implementing over the next few weeks and months. He was not happy with it. He feels it was inhumane and he stated his opinion very strongly on Twitter. Now, there was a big backlash on this. People were calling out him out. People were saying, oh, you're working for the BBC. You've got to be impartial, this, that and the other. Now, if you're not from the UK, you need to know that the BBC is supposed to be this impartial, neutral news broadcaster. However, the argument against that is, is that Gary Lineker isn't actually a news broadcaster. He is a freelance TV presenter that specifically works on sporting events, mainly football. So basically the argument against that was, well, I don't need to be impartial. I'm a freelance new I'm I'm a freelance football presenter. I'm just going to give my opinion on Twitter. But look, he is back now. The BBC have apologized and have committed to a comprehensive review of its social media guidelines as stated to my right-hand side. Thanks to the Athletic for confirming this. But he is back. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I've got all of the information here. Got a few tweets from Gary Lineker himself. Let's get straight into it and make sure you like the video. So, first tweet from Gary Lineker. After a surreal few days, I'm delighted that we have navigated a way through this. I want to thank you all for the incredible support, particularly my colleagues at the BBC Sport for the remarkable show of solidarity. Football is a team game, but their backing was overwhelming. Now, if you're not from the UK and you wasn't aware, Match of the Day is a weekly highlight show for the Premier League games. It has been going on for many, many years, many decades, and it is basically a staple for British football culture. Now, for the first time in many, many years, Match of the Day was shown over the weekend without any pundits, without any commentary, without any presentation at all. It was literally just a highlight show. Now, this was partly because of Gary Lineker's suspension, but also people in the media, people in football media, pundits, really came out and showed a strong support for Gary Lineker because they felt his treatment was unjust. There was even rumours that the Premier League players, coaches, etc. were going to do a boycott on doing media interviews for the weekend. Now, that didn't end up happening, but that's how strongly people feel about this situation in general and how they feel and respect for Gary Lineker. Now, Gary Lineker, ex-Everton man, Spurs man, Barcelona man, very respected figure, not just for what he did when he was playing football, but also what he's done after. He often, well, every year presents the BBC Sports Personality of the Year Awards, and I believe he is the highest paid BBC presenter on their books. Um, so this is huge. This is huge. Next tweet. I've been presenting sport on the BBC for almost three decades and I'm immeasurably proud to work with the best and fairest broadcaster in the world. Sounds a little bit PC, Gary. I can't lie. I cannot wait to get back into the match of the day chair on Saturday. So he will be back this weekend. Gary is back. Lineker is back this Saturday for the next match of the day show. Now, look, it disappoints me a bit. I would have thought he would have stuck by his guns a little bit. Of course, he needs to keep his job fully, respect that. But you've just been suspended by them, Gary. Are they really the fairest broadcaster in the world if they haven't allowed you to state a simple opinion about a very, you know, normal and controversial topic in the media right now? I don't know. But he's showing his respect. He's probably had a few good conversations with people in and around the BBC. So I can't really blame him too much for doing that next tweet. Final thought, however difficult the last few days have been, it simply doesn't compare to having to flee your home from persecution or war to seek refuge in a land far away. It's heartwarming to have seen the empathy towards their plight from so many of you. Now, I appreciate Gary for doing this. He's spinning the narrative back to the issue at hand. The whole reason he put this tweet out is because he feels so strongly about those seeking asylum in the UK and those that are going on a very long journey, very long travels, just to try and find a safe place to stay. Now, 
Gary actually is known for housing refugees in his own house and in some of the properties that he owns as well. So this is something Gary, you know, he practices what he preaches at the end of the day. It isn't, isn't just him putting empty words on Twitter. So I respect him for bringing it back to the issue at hand. And I guess it makes sense, you know, Gary's been suspended by the BBC, sure. However, it's nothing like coming from a war-torn country and making that uh, just like horrible, horrible journey all the way to the UK, essentially. Um, so appreciate him bringing it back to that issue. We remain a country of predominantly tolerant, welcoming and generous people. Thank you. So he's just trying to say, look, most most people in Britain, they, they are empathetic. They do understand the importance of this situation. Now, look, I'm not going to give you my 100% opinion on it today. I just want to state the facts. But it's true. Most people in the UK are very tolerant. Most people in the UK do support the refugees coming over. And look, for me, um, just in basic terms, if someone's coming from a war-torn country and they're coming here for a better life, why not let them? That's my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's the words from Gary Lineker from the horse's mouth itself. He's happy to be back. He's back on Saturday. And it seems like there's not too much love lost with the BBC. So it's good that this entire drama and, 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 and argument has come to a good and not bitter end, which I like. And there has been a statement from Tim Davey, the Director General of the BBC. So it's a little bit small on screen, but let me read it out. Everyone recognises that this has been a difficult period for staff, contributors, presenters, and most importantly, our audiences. I apologise for this. The potential confusion caused by the grey areas of the BBC social media guidance that was introduced in 2020 is recognised. I want to get matters resolved and our sport content back on air. So Tim Davey admitting that actually the social media guidance set by the BBC, their internal employment policy, uh, for usage of social media is not clear enough and he's admitted the fault is with the BBC. Impartiality is important to the BBC, it's also important to the public. The BBC has a commitment to impartiality in its charter and a commitment to freedom of expression, which is always going to be a trade-off, you know. You need to be impartial, but you should also allow your news presenters and, and, and sports journalists as well to give their opinion every now and then. That is a difficult balancing act to get right where people are subject to different contracts and on-air positions and with different audience and social media profiles. The BBC's social media guidance is designed to help manage these uh, sometimes difficult challenges and I'm aware that there is a need to ensure that the guidance is up to this task. It should be clear, proportionate and appropriate. So again, just them admitting we need to make a change to these guidelines. Accordingly, we are now announcing a review led by an independent expert reporting to the BBC on its existing social media guidance with a particular focus on how it applies to freelancers outside news and current affairs. The BBC and myself are aware that Gary is in favour of such a review. As mentioned earlier, Gary Lineker is just a freelance sports presenter for the BBC. So now it looks like the BBC are going to look at this and go, OK, well, we need to implement some sort of policy for those guys as well, because maybe our policy, which is predominantly for our news, news broadcasters and journalists specifically, doesn't really apply to them. And we need a different set of guidelines for freelance sports journalists and otherwise. Shortly, the BBC will announce who will conduct that review. Whilst this work is undertaken, the BBC's current social media guidance remains in place. So no change at the moment, but there will probably be a change in the future after this review. Gary is a valued part of the BBC, and I know how much the BBC means to Gary. And I look forward to him presenting our coverage this weekend. Another little thing um, about the BBC, which people from outside the UK may or may not know, is that it's heavily funded by a TV licence fee, which is paid for by the Great British Public. That is why this can be such a tricky affair, because it is a publicly funded service, which is linked to the government as well. And on that basis, one, you do need impartiality, but two, when kind of they make this decision about someone like Gary Lineker that's so respected and loved by the public, by most people, not everyone loves him, I completely get that, that is when a big backlash will come to the fore. Uh, but look, BBC are happy for him to be back and they're showing their full respect to Gary. Ooh, and then the final tweet I wanted to get up, uh, 
Uh, Gary Lineker is due to return to ho uh, hosting the sport of BBC for the broadcast is set to apologise to the match they present a statement expected imminently. That was the last thing I wanted to get up. Actually, this was the tweet I wanted to get up. With his, with his red card overturned, Gary Lineker maintains his record of never being sent off in his professional career. Now, I like this tweet. If you didn't know, Gary Lineker never received a single book in a yellow or red card throughout his whole professional football career. And people were starting to say, well, this is his first sending off. He's been suspended by the BBC. It's his first real uh, issue in any shape or form. And uh, look, I mean, if we take this seriously, it kind of proves what kind of person Gary Lineker is at the end of the day. You know, never being booked in his career is a very, very difficult feat. Uh, but it is quite funny, this tweet. I, I enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys did as well. Look. Gary Lineker's back. Gary Lineker is back. I, for one, am happy because I think he does a very, very good job at what he does. You know, his presentation skills are immaculate. His knowledge of the game is second to none. He's a bit of a British icon in terms of sport presentation and sport journalism and sport punditry. I like him. Yes, he has political views on Twitter. I may agree or disagree with them, but I think it's his right to be able to express those views, particularly considering he is a freelance reporter, a freelance broadcaster for the BBC. At the end of the day, this is about freedom of expression. And Gary Lineker is someone that works on behalf of the BBC, but ultimately shouldn't be constricted to their specific guidelines for news journalists. However, there is new guidelines coming in. We'll keep a close eye on it and how that might impact Gary Lineker's tweeting going forward. And once it is introduced, I wonder whether Gary Lineker will change his tweeting style or this whole controversy and drama might come up again. Let's bloody see. Guys, comment your thoughts below. Gary Lineker, did he deserve to get suspended in the first place? Does he deserve to come back like he is now? What do you make of the BBC? What do you make of Gary Lineker? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so, so much for listening to this quick little snippet today and like the video if you haven't already. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye.